Hey guys, this is Jacob here with the final update on Rosa. I consider the build done since it is comfortable to farm Timark 8.4 deep space maps with it, which I will show you right here. Even without Eternity, like Eternity just makes it... I don't know, like you don't even notice it that, that much. So this this is without Eternity, I'm using the Illusory Ocean Silk amulet instead. Just so you guys see that it is completely possible to do even without it. <clears throat> so this is a regular 8.4 deep space. And what you do with the build, you are stuck in fervor, so it is a fervor stacker and you are boosting the effects of fervor on it as high as possible, increasing its like critical strike chance, critical strike damage, movement speed and additional damage. Yeah, so fervor stacker, fervor stacker, haunting abomination, you are just pulling monsters throughout the map, they eventually die. You cannot pull bosses though, so you have to stop on bosses. Uh, what I got rid of was the movement skill. Well, if you feel like the damage is enough for you, or I found myself not using the movement skill that often, so I decided to like swap it out for uh, circle to in to get some additional spell damage. And if you want to play with uh, eternity. Then I swap the circle for vulnerability course setup. So th that would be the only change. <coughs> and you don't need vulnerability on this amulet because it triggers it itself. So that's why I, but that's why I'm using the circle buff. Yeah. So let me just finish this. Um, build is fairly tanky, like it has 5.2k energy shield, or 5.3 5 almost. It has capped block chance, it has 60% block ratio, which can be scaled up to 75% if you would be willing to swap uh, hero memories for even more defense. Um, there are four possible upgrades for the build that I would consider going for if you if it was like the only character that you want to play during the season. But those would cost me a lot of FEs, like around 25 or 30 k right now. So I will not be doing that. I'd rather play a different build or different character so I can do another with or like another zero to hero for you guys <laughs> with a different class so yeah if if you would be willing to spend more on this i will let you know what the upgrades would be for it so as you can see just finishing the map killing the boss with eternity it would just die faster, basically, because you would get to the boss stacked up with damage stacks. That's it, but it is completely viable even without Eternity, so don't really care. And at this point of the build, the Eternity is not, like, that costly. It just fits into the build, so you might get it as well. You might use it on other characters as well. So, yeah, that was on my drop pets. So, not increasing damage through packed spirits at all. <coughs> damage of the build is around, um, I believe, around 1 trillion almost on the loot packed spirits. You can check it here. Buff up. <coughs> Let's 
let the haunted abominations stack up a bit and it should go to yeah like this and this would be uh, somewhere around 750 billion to 1 trillion damage per second throughout the map basically after you stack up so this is the damage and the damage is pretty much the same bit eternity as well let's stop damaging at 30 seconds like this let's just wait to see how much damage the build does so around 40 seconds so that's around like 700 billion dps basically so yeah relativity is the same now let's go through the character we are stuck in fervor so most of the items or like the two core pieces here and the rings are for fervor so for the gloves you want to get corrupted the additional base effect plus one percent additional damage for every free fervor that would be how much now 500 600 so that's the piece here on the boots you want to get fervor effect of high stacks like close to 200 those would be another like 600 so we are around 1200 now and for the rings those are the items that could be still upgraded uh, the ideal piece here would be like triple fervor effect but double fervor at effect with the damage is around 2k i believe yeah around 3k so around 3k for each of these uh, rings and with triple fervor effect those would be the upgrades uh, that would be this those are around 6000 each so 12000 for the rings if you would want to go for the top top that and those are the rings both the same double fervor and damage from for fervor for fervor rating or triple fervor effect that would be the go-to uh, if you want to go uh, budget like complete budget just one fervor effect and that those are cheap so yeah <coughs> you can start fairly cheap and slowly like build up fervor effect fervor effect is the most like boost that you can get together with the uh, rosa mechanics through block ratio for the helmet and armor those are core pieces as well helmet gives you max terra quantity plus two so you can cast two more haunted abominations at a time and the armor gives you plus one and then it gives you terra charge restoration speed which is important stat so you want to get his get this high rolled so your terra charges recharge quickly and you can use like higher level uh, trigger skill so you can cast the terra uh, the haunted abominations more often and i've gone with corrupted movement speed just to get some movement speed because at the base the armor like reduces your movement speed depending on how many terra charges you've consumed recently so this armor would be around 50 helmet is around 20 30 yeah negligible uh, for the belt you are looking for an elemental resistance like uh, enamor and those go for fairly cheap i've bought this one for uh, 70 fe's so yeah you basically are looking for an enamor that will increase your survival that's how i chose it so 
my cold resistance is not capped, so there is still a room for a better NMR or for precise elemental resistance aura. So yeah, but 70 FE makes you capped, like this one is for 600 and would give me the cold resistance that I'm missing. And then NMR will cap all your resistances, like all, all elemental and the erosion as well. Uh, let me hide myself for a second, like I have 60 erosion and the rest is almost capped as well. So like that, so that's the Enamor. And the core piece of the build would be the Varel's Snicker. You want to get it corrupted with the Void Orbs. And if you want to go a bit higher with budget, you want to get corrupted with this well and those go for those go for around 2k with the corrupted spell damage like double corrupt void orbs and spell damage so that's another upgrade and for the amulet illusory ocean silk iron rain for the physical damage to attacks and spells and for for vulnerability course and it also helps you a lot with survivability against some of the bosses like early on like uh, traveler deals erosion damage so we are able to mitigate a lot of erosion damage using this amulet as well so yeah and for mapping i recommend using eternity this and that's it uh, for the skills haunting abomination and if you get a high roll on your armor, like for the restoration, for the Terra Charge restoration, you can go to 0.4 seconds trigger on your instruction medium. So your Terra Charges are able to stack up to two before you, before your next cast. Like you can see here, it is stuck into two and then it gets cast. So that's how you check it, if you have enough Terra Charge speed. Because every Terra Charge on the Haunted Abomination gives it 60% additional damage. Which we can check down here. 60% additional damage for this skill for every Terra Charge consumed. So you have two Terra Charges. You can go up to three, but that, is, that would be in, uh, for a cost of Terra Quantity basically. Or even four. Uh, and you would then have to like go higher with this to get like 0.8 seconds maybe so yeah uh, for this activation medium you are looking for the uh, trigger time and you are looking for additional damage on this <clears throat> so 30% additional damage for every instruction and you are generating instruction through different support on different scale I will show it later uh, yeah so haunted abomination activation medium instruction makes it automated ground divide max terra charge so gives you two charges crit damage you are 100 percent crit capped so crit damage is the great support here tendon slicer additional physical damage and speed up formation additional damage for supported skill the terra charge does not really matter because your terra charge is set by your armor that's why you want high roll on the armor <coughs> Well, this is also a mistake that I've made in the last video, like I've told you that we have this for the Terra Charge speed, we don't, like the Terra Charge speed is determined by your armor, this, this does not matter, this just gives you 35% additional damage. <coughs> and for the support that you pair with this skill is Whirlwind or uh, Savage Charge, both work, uh, choose the one that you like more, like I like Whirlwind more because with savage charge you might get too fast and you are not able to uh, like your uh, hero trait is not able to proc often enough to pull monsters behind you so you have to like watch for it so i'm using whirlwind but you can use savage charge and go through maps faster a lot faster because the inherent uh, stat of whirlwind is it reduces your movement speed by 15 percent and savage charge gives you uh eight percent movement speed per channeled stack so you have like five stacks so that's 40% movement speed while savage charging 
and it, it would look like this basically what I don't like on this is that you cannot stop like you have to move your hand all the time on a single target so yeah that gets a little bit tedious over time while with uh, while with whirlwind uh, you can like do this put your cursor to the middle of the screen and your character will stop for a bit you just don't want to stop for a long time because you want to keep your uh, hammer charges up and those stack as you move <coughs> so yeah so those are the two variations here and you pair that with critical strike uh, uh, yeah activation medium critical strikes which provides you with the instruction charges which then boosts your haunt and abomination through this so i'm pairing whirlwind with hardened for additional damage and uh, damage reduction yeah hardened is 25 percent damage reduction <coughs> and then with mark which mark provides you with critical strike damage for monsters that are marked like plus 40 percent critical strike damage and the last link here uh, I use recklessness because it gives me like 14% additional attack speed so I can generate the instructions faster but what you could do here is you could take guard to be able to generate barrier so if you decide to use movement skill then definitely you can use guard because movement skill will reset your uh, channel so you will generate barrier more often or you can use blinding but what's what's bad on blinding is that you blind yourself as well from time to time so yeah that's why i wasn't using it or maybe that was a map mod M not really sure but that would be another like defense layer if you use blinding uh yeah i'm going with reckless <coughs> for my build defensive skill ages of fire with activation medium elite that activates it when el when el elite is like nearby uh, you can use any other activation medium like uh, maybe this one if you are willing to like pay more and have it 100% up not not uh, only near elites then this support can support the defensive skill this is going for around 2k so that would be an option there but i've gone the cheap way activation medium elite extended duration to increase its uptime and uplifting to increase its defense effect what it does it increases your block chance uh, attack and spell block chance so you are pretty much capped even without it through uh, talent tree but it still helps <coughs> on some map mods uh, the empower skill healer mana boil increases your or gives you additional spell damage and you pair it with self sacrifice which increases its effect by 70% and this uh, second mod, eight, minus 80% additional duration, does not work on mana boil because mana boil is a permanent empire skill which is up until you uh, run out of mana. Mm, so yeah, that's the self-sacrifice here. Uh, mania, more status effect and mass effect, even more status effect. You pretty much just press mana boil once at the start of the map and then it never drops unless you stop attacking and stop generating mana basically so you want to use it once while you while you have uh, two charges for the mass effect to take more effect on it basically and the last skill here uh, would be if you are not using eternity then arcane circle with again activation medium edit and i i'm going for maximum uptime so addition, I've bought like perfect role here for additional duration 
I pair that with extended duration and pain amplification when the, which increases its duration even more and then well fought battle to reduce its uh, uh, cooldown. And that still does not give me permanent uptime, it just give it, it is just pretty close, like it gets cast every 8 seconds and lasts for around 7 seconds, so I have 1 second downtime between casts. Yeah, around one second. So yeah, uh, and if you are using Eternity, then I'm swapping this for Vulnerability Curse, paired with Terran of Malice and uh, Abysmal Hatred, like this. I study the rules in the night of and the damage then is pretty much the same with Eternity on single target. So we can check it right here. Again, this is with uh, with loot pets, not de not damage pets. So we are stacked up now, and we can test the damage now. Oh um, yeah, this is the damage with eternity on single target. Let's do 15 seconds. In seconds, so that's almost one trillion damage there. Okay, so that's for the active skills. For the passive skills, energy fortress to have some energy shield, right? Then does one selfishness and aura amplification. Amplification all increases the aura effect. Elemental resistance. If you buy good enough enamor, you don't need precise elemental resistance. So just. If you want to save FEs, basically, just buy better Enamor, that's it. So, again, standard sound selfishness and aura amplification, that, that makes it possible to go to uh, like 79% uh, all res, and I have 1% from something, from the Enamor. So, without this, I would be at 79% all res. Uh, okay, uh, the third aura, precise, steadfast, I drop that if you don't have it, just use the normal version. Seal conversion, so you reserve it on life. Selfishness and standards one increases its effect. And weapon amp is for additional physical damage and increasing its effect again. For candles, I'm going for max terra quantity and I pair that with aura effect to get more value from my auras. If you would like to go like ham with candles, like I have both with Max Terra and Aura Effect, but the upgrade here would be going for candles like these, where you have Max Terra Quantity and Control Spell, or Max Terra Quantity and Grudge, which would support your uh, Haunting Abomination with and other two links like control spell and the grudge basically so those are the upgrades for those slots and those are another 12k of upgrades so the four possible upgrades and the hammer like this is 6 12 another 12 for candles so 24 and 2k for hammer so around 26k worth of upgrades still for this build and that would boost your damage, obviously. Uh, that's for skills, that's everything for skills. Now for the passive trees. God of War, uh, it pretty much stayed the same. The only thing that I swapped here is I took out like <coughs> defense. And I've slotted in skill duration to increase the uptime of the curse and the circle. So if you don't like, if you are just using the curse, then you don't really need. Well, you would have to test it, right? You can get rid of one point here. That's just min maxing, and put it to more defense. 
and check if your course is permanent uptime still. This seems that it would still have permanent uptime because the course lasts for around 8 seconds, I believe. So, yeah. So, that's for that. Uh, God of War. <coughs> Brutality, additional physical damage. The damage is pure physical. So, yeah. And automatic upgrade, with, which provides you with spellbook. Mm. For the Shadow Dancer, looks like this. I will post the links for the build in the description of the video. Continuum. I was trying to do with Blunt. The damage is almost the same, but seems like with Continuum it's a little bit more. Seems like the injury buffer on monsters is uh, too much of a disadvantage for the damage numbers, so yeah. And the second one is a hair trigger for additional damage of skills for every point of fervor rating. So we are fervor built, so this is the go to here. In the ranger tree, the ranger tree looks like this. Um, fluke have the lucky effect, so that's more critical strikes. There's pretty much no other because we are using the haunted, abomina haunted Abomination and any of these do not support like Haunted Abomination because that's a spell. So yeah, that's the only choice here. And impending with additional damage. You are pulling monsters with Rosa to you, so this is up all the time. For Statue of the God, I've gone with Park. Eventually, the only two like slides that you or mods on slides that you want to get would be gain fervor when blocking. This one lets you swap uh, endless fervor for old automatic upgrade because whenever you block, you get fervor. So yeah, don't mistake gains fervor when blocking with gains fervor rating well when blocking because if you only have a fervor rating generation but you don't have a source of fervor then you are not generating fervor basically so you need a source of fervor which is this and then the second one would be this mod which gains five fervor rating when blocking that helps you stack your fervor rating much uh, faster because the, the normal wave that fervor rating stacks is when you deal a critical strike, which takes some time to stack to 100. So this helps a lot with stacking server. Okay, <clears throat> and in the later phases of the build, you are you start stacking block ratio, and you want to cap that stat to 60%, basically. So you can change, you can check how much block ratio you have right here. And it is capped at 60% in my version of the build, or 75% if you do a few changes, which I don't think that are worth it. So, yeah, 60%. And how I do it here, I've managed to get a divi the Gods of War Divinity with block ratio in the on the last slot. And I also got movement speed on that, for fervor rating and some additional block through armor, so this slate, I was lucky. If you don't have this, you can just use another Fallen Star Light and, or another two Fallen Star Lights, or any other, basically. And if you don't get block ratio on the last slot near the spark, then you would need to swap these two mods, like block ratio on the bottom, to cap your, cap, uh, your block ratio to 60%, basically, so that's the trade-off there. So, block ratio on the bottom, gain 5 fervor five rating on the top. Block ratio on the bottom, critical strike damage per fervor on the top. And block ratio on top, and critical strike damage on the bottom. If you have block ratio on the other slate, on the bottom. Because what Spark does, it copies last talent from the adjacent slates, so that's 15% block ratio, and the crit damage here, 
and I also have a Sparks of Modfire, which co which copies one talent or the last talent from one of the adjacent slates, which is specified here. So talent on adjacent slate on the left of to this slate. So this is that's this one. So it's copying the critical strike damage basically. On the pedigree, I'm going with knowledgeable to increase the defense skill level which increases the level of your uh, fire shield and uh, empower skill effect increases your uh, bonuses from mana boil and sing circle of anguish or arcane circle sorry so yeah that's for statue uh, for hero traits like this all the top ones hero relic uh, murderous intent plus two percent additional damage taken by all enemies in the holy domain for every five murderous intent and you are scaling up murderous intent through block ratio through the last talent here so we are getting 120 murderous intent upper limit through our 60% block ratio here and then for every 5% fervor murderous intent upper limit plus 1 up to plus 40 so yeah it's that and all three of the memories would be fervor effect and murderous intent upper limit there you go for the hero trait you can support her hero trait with uh, support skill so the most optimal one is activation medium perpetual motion which triggers it every time it can be triggered and you want to you you want to get one with high cooldown recovery speed so she can trigger it more often the base cooldown on that is 0.6 seconds uh, right yeah, 0.6 seconds. So I not test it, but I think that the, the cooldown reduction increases the cooldown because it is casting more often than if I slot in efficient cast and cast it manually. So yeah, if you don't have this one, you can use efficient cast or any other like of the possible supports. And you will just have to press the F, your, your hero trait manually all the time. so this is the last thing that you should want to get like this this is completely quality of life not necessary for the build at all you can just press or keep pressing the skill as you go through the map uh, is that everything yeah i believe that that's everything i can show you a run with the Eternity, just so you see how it goes with Eternity, but it, it is not that different, so yeah, uh, so Eternity run would look like this, just press my uh, mana ball once and then just keep running and dragon monsters behind you until they die basically like this it is pretty chill gameplay sometimes when you don't have movement skill you might get caught in some uh, monster skills sometimes but they die pretty fast most of the times unless you roll some really crazy mods on uh, on the map like damage avoidance or re damage reduction while rare monsters are nearby and such so you can actually roll some nasty combinations of mods which make monsters almost like impossible to kill but that's rare you don't encounter that very often the only mod that I do not 
run and I cannot run pretty much is minus block chance. Minus block ratio does not matter, but minus block chance, you pretty much just kill yourself. Because what the hammer does, it provides you with damage to physical with physical damage to spells, but it also deals physical damage to yourself when you are using skills, which you are blocking the damage. But even through the block, you are able to kill yourself if you don't have enough block chance, basically. Oh yeah. So. As long as my build is capable of clearing like Statue of Might comfortably without dying, I consider it done because it allows you to farm insane amounts of FEs over time on deep space maps. So Statue of Might or God of Machines basically are the, the two go-to mechanics to generate FEs and pair that with cube and infinite nightmare that's what I'm doing the entire season and it simply works oh yeah that's the map done yeah, cut a hole on top of your head so the light can come through. That's it for the video. I thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.